Well, when you've got decent power and, and you do let your hands go, I mean it. that is the high risk, high reward that we'll just see, the game yeah, that he's just played. On. And maybe it's just got him out of jail because that was, well, arguably the, the, the torrid three minutes of his career. That was, that was the crisis of his career. It really was. Now, is the worst behind him? Has the opportunity gone for Lara? The most unexpected of twists and turns in this one. A fight that I don't think too many people had great expectations of. Especially without a title on the line, but Mauricio Lara turned that on its head. And now Warrington definitely looking a lot stronger in the legs than he was at the start of the last round. It's an encouraging sign. He knows what's coming, that's for sure, Warrington. Good shot he's got to do. Yeah, it really was. He got clipped on the way back, Lara, but he does carry such a dig. Very, very lazy, Lara. And it could be his downfall, he could have had this fight won in the last round. And, uh, two rounds ago, as I said, sorry, in the fourth. So I will say one thing, Nick, this would be something with 20,000 of the Leeds fans in here. Wouldn't it just? We'll never ever take the fans for granted again after no. this period is over. No, we, 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 we spoke about the lack of fans, we spoke about the fact that he's vacated the title. Do you think if he had the title still, Warrington, Lara would have closed the show then? Well, it's a very good point, you just don't know what's going through the heads of these guys, whether whether Lara didn't close the show, whether he wasn't able to, wasn't allowed to. But certainly, um, well, you wouldn't say crisis averted, but certainly he's ridden out the worst of it in the last two or three minutes. And like you say, Nick, the legs just look like they're back there. He's picking his shots a little bit better, his eyes certainly look clearer. And uh, for, for Lara, no doubt he'll sense that opportunities will still come, while Warrington is still more static than he was. But the, the truth of the matter is, since the first bell, his feet have looked so much slower than, than they were against... Oh, he's caught uh, there yeah, from the nuts. The right hand this time has caught him. Sorry to interrupt you, Chris, but it's another problem looming here for Warrington. Lara getting through straight with that left hand there. His right eye is really starting to look a mess now. Mauricio Lara, but every time he lands clean, it just seems to send a shudder. There he goes again. And Warrington is getting caught so regularly. He's followed up with another straight left. Straight down Main Street again, just as he did before. And uh, just when we were thinking Warrington might have weathered the worst of this, suddenly he's in a bit of trouble again. The frustrating bit for me about Warrington is Lara's shot at all the same pace. It's never one, two, one, two. It's always one, 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 one. And if it's in combinations, that the same speeds every time this should be a lot easier for Warrington to read yeah. but because he's here to think as well it's just not just not registering properly yeah. that wasn't a great round for him either it really wasn't you know Nick there are a lot of parallels to be drawn here between what Sir Carl Frampton experienced in the Warrington fight and what Warrington is experiencing tonight Carl was caught really cold in the first round he, he he didn't go down as Warrington did here but uh, he was really, really buzzed, and it was because he didn't start fast enough. He didn't really respect his opponent's power. He thought he was going to be able to walk through him, probably in the same way that Warrington thought he was going to be able to walk through Mauricio Lara tonight. But as a result, he weathered that storm, had to dig in and go through the most torrid 12 rounds of his career. Warrington described that fight as one he really enjoyed. He's not enjoying this tonight. Uh, no, uh, no uh, way. No. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh... That was a guy that was literally out on his feet. That is the definition of out on his feet. How has he somehow managed to recover from that? But it's, it's not over yet. Boy. This now for me, after watching that, after watching many, many, many people and experiencing it myself, when you get hurt, when you get put down, or, or when you hurt that badly, this is autopilot for Josh Wellington at the moment. Yeah. He won't have his faculties all back. He won't be, be thinking the same way he was thinking when he was walking to the ring, folks. This is autopilot. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't remember these rounds. And, and do you know, Paul, I was just thinking exactly the same thing. He kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Joshua in the first Ruiz fight. Exactly. You, you, you hear your brains, you know, it's, it's a concussion. It, it's, you, you, you struggle remembering. This is all autopilot, what I'm seeing at the moment, in my opinion. I'll tell you what it's reminding me of. It's reminding me.
we have another fight that Howard Foster is the referee of. Frotch Groves won when Groves put Frotch on the floor at the end of the first round and Carl Frotch just somehow made it through rounds two, three and four. He spoke about this since Frotch that he didn't remember much from, yeah. from after. I'll tell you, Watch has been caught again by another left hook. He's getting caught so cleanly. I tell you, somewhere in China, Kan Zhu is watching this and saying, bring it on. Let's do it. Convinced though, Nick, that Warrington just wouldn't have approached Kan Zhu in this way. I think he'd have come out of the traps. I think he would have given it the necessary attention that it needed. But ultimately, he came out slow. He started um, at a pace that we just never really see Warrington start. He's trying to kind of pick and move and do all the things that he doesn't normally do. He's normally all over you like a cheap suit. Takes you out of your game plan, outfights you, outworks you, out hustles you. He didn't do any of those things. It's given Mauricio Lara the opportunities and as a result being caught cold and hurt. And, and for the rest of the fight, even if he sees it out, he'll never truly recover from, from being hurt. He's, he's going to stay hurt at this point in the fight. Yeah. Uh, and he also wouldn't have gone into, or wanted to go into a fight with Kanji after 15 months layoff. He'd have wanted the tune-up. And this is the tune-up and it's a tough tune-up and, and it's, it, it's not looking the best at the moment for him. Well, it's certainly the poorest I've seen him, that's for sure. Of course, again with the right hand. Really just gritting his teeth here and trying to make something happen. But that engine, I mean, the one thing with Josh Warrington, he's got a relentless motor on him, it's never got started. He's, he's been, been stuck on the grid in this fight. There seem to be an awful lot behind these punches that come in from Warrington now either. But at least he's up in the work right here in the seventh round. His legs are still gone, he's yeah. just took two steps back there and stumbled a little bit as well, Warrington is so brave of him. This is really brave and, and, and the testament to what a champion he is. Tough, tough night this is turning into. This certainly wasn't in the script. Have a look at you. Have a look at you. Go on. Go on. All he's got is that hook. Yeah. All he's looking for is that hook, John. The eyes are glazed, aren't they, when you're looking at them? Can't let him have any more. Have a spit, son. Have a spit. Can get some water. Spin it right there. Spit out. Spit. Spit again. Have a look at your face. Swipe it up. Swipe it up. It's not that bad. That's all right, that's all right. It's not that bad. It's not bad at all anyway, in fact, to be honest. Big cut inside the mouth. Right, listen. You've got the ability to box him. All he's got is coming back without hook. Can't afford to get caught without hook anymore. Stay turned on, all this one. Yeah, we're doing on time, sure. Well, that's right, he does have his technical limitations, Lara. But even with those limitations, just look at what he's done here to Josh Warrington. Round eight. It's amazing that Warrington is still there. It's suddenly just become a question of somehow find a way to get through this. The thing that surprises me, and you have to give it, give a lot of credit to Lara here, is that he's never been able to impose himself at any point in the fight at all, Warrington. The body shot there from Lara as well. He's, he's vicious with that left hook to the body, as, as the majority of Mexicans are. Is Lara better than advertised? Because nobody really gave him much of a chance in this one. I don't think he's better than advertised. I think what Chris was saying before is, is, is spot on. I think Warrington's completely overlooked him. Yeah. Along with the no fans, along with the inactivity, along with the, you know, just assuming because you're the best and the champion, and he is the best and he is the champion, or even though he's vacated, that he will just walk through this. He's took his eye off the ball, I think, and, and added to those other factors which I've got a bit of sympathy for him for. But you know what? If there's one sport that doesn't brook excuses, it's this game. You know, yeah, no fans, no title, you've overlooked the guy. Well, tough. If, if you pay the price, that's your hard luck. He's still 
trying to make something happen for himself here, but what a flat performance it's been from Warrington. But on the other hand, isn't it amazing that he's still standing, but Lara still threatening, still dangerous. I think we can all agree he hasn't recovered since the fourth round knockdown. No, no and I think you're right, Paul, looking at him in the corner, I really don't think he, he actually knows completely where he is at this stage. Sean O'Hagan was saying it's not that bad, it's not that bad. I think yeah. that was wishful thinking, and I think trying to convince wh whoever is at home, because most of the lights are off at this stage, that, that everything's OK and he can work yeah. his way back into this. But you're right, he is fighting off instinct. He's still picking shots, he's still trying to find something. But Laura massively in the ascendancy, and he knows if he lands clean again, he can... He can start to unravel Warrington here. I don't know how much there is left in the tank. I, I would be very surprised if he sees out the 12 rounds at this stage. I had, I had to fight once nowhere near this level. I was fighting against Conroy McIntosh and I put him down in the first round and he dropped me in the fourth. I won on points over eight and I still to this day don't remember the last four rounds. The week later he, he, he put Adam Barker down twice. And then, and then there's that, that strange ending with Barker, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah. A heavy, heavy punch yet and I, I still to this day 15 years later, 12 years later, don't remember the, the, the last four rounds of the fight. Did you ever watch it back? No. <laughs> Bet you didn't. No. I just I don't remember it. Oh, I don't think Josh Warrington's going to be watching this back either. Brought again with another left hook. Another round goes by. That eye gets worse from Lara and Warrington. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Little, little fence, little tall fence. You say it's so instinct and reactive, and you know yeah. the nickname of the warrior. Well, he's that, got the warrior heart here. Nearly so Warrington, yeah. because he really is being put under pressure. I've just heard Warrington talk, and I, I, I didn't understand the word of it. Mmm. Yeah. Air sound. Right, listen. My lips a bit fat, lad. Well, get it on, fucker. You know, let's have that back hand up. Yeah. Come on, let's get it done now. He's had so much success already. <laughs> well, Nick, he, he said, uh, for anyone watching stateside that's not in favour of the, uh, the, the, the Norman accent, he said, my legs are a bit flat, but I'm OK. I mean, that, that's an understatement, really. Yeah, really. A uh, lesser fight, it wouldn't even have the legs at the moment. I've been sat in the dressing room wondering what has happened. It has to be said as well, that I think you guys will agree with me, Howard Foster for me in those last 20 seconds of that round did him a huge favour, letting him get through to the end of the round. So a lot of referees would have stopped that. You know what Nick, I hope he's done him a favour. I hope, I hope after the fight he's done him a favour. Because he's took far too many shots, Josh Walton, compared to what he normally does. Yeah, there we go again, and another left hook, and he's been shaken by that. Legs are gone. Yeah, I'll tell you something. He's got to step in. Yeah, he's gone again, left hook, and I don't think he's going to get up from that. And if he does, it's got to be stopped. Yeah, it's waved off all over. Josh Warrington's perfect record collapses in a heat. Beaten in the biggest shock we've seen in a British ring in many a year. Mauricio Lara, the unheralded Mexican, has come in and destroyed George Warrington. Well, they're unhappy in the Warrington corner that Lara is celebrating, and you can see their point because Warrington is in again real distress here, and now Lara has just stopped because this is. This is again worrying times because the tank was empty and when you get knocked down like that and when there's no resistance left, that's when things can get really nasty and hopefully it isn't nasty, hopefully that's just exhaustion. And Nick, I, I know you said that, uh, you know, Howard Foster is potentially doing him a, a favour by letting him carry on, but I think Paul and I were maybe looking at it from the, the point of view yeah. that actually he was on a hiding to nothing there, the writing was on the wall and it really did have the look about it that when Lara landed those clean shots again this was going to happen and it's just really sad that it has uh, I think you can see the disappointment from Josh he tried to get up and I think they've just said lay down get some oxygen and, and, and rest now but um, well I mean talk about derailing momentum he, he was the ultimate momentum fighter wasn't he it was 10 years to get to the top and when he got there made a couple of great defences and really through no fault of his own has had the pause button pressed on his career and this is a really cruel 
twist of fate for him because, of course, we know the Galahad situation. We know he, he voluntarily gave up the IBF belt with the hope of pursuing bigger and better fights. But now he's going to have to go back and, and do a completely different reassessment of where he goes from here, aside from the fact that he, he may physically not be the same after this. Well, that, 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 that's the kind of defeat that's going to take a lot out of a fighter and you don't necessarily come back from that. When, when, when we were talking about whether Howard Foster did them a favour, I kept saying no because I didn't want to see that. Mm -hmm. and, and that Completely one, agree. horrible one-shot knockout where you think that could have been prevented by Howard Foster. And, and I'm not saying it because I like them, not necessarily the corner. They know he's he's okay, even though he's concussed, he's still handled himself, he's still get, but the referee had, had a job to do in the fourth round there, and I, I, I feel he maybe could have done it, I don't know. If it, it had been the other way around, would Howard Foster have stopped it? Exactly, completely, but if he had the belt, I think he was still viewing him as a world champion, defending his title there, and gave him another chance to keep the title. Yeah, and that, and that rightly or wrongly is, is the kind of champion's privilege that you get as the home fighter, as, as one perceived to be the, the champion or the, the defender of something that, you know, you do get given the benefit of the doubt in those situations and maybe the ref will look at the clock with 20 seconds to go and say, if he can physically get to the corner, I'll let him because he, he's got more to defend and protect. And we go back to the Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua and, fight. And the, the minute, same thing happened there. Sorry to you, but the minute is usually enough, isn't it? Absolutely. A lot of people recover. Absolutely. They either recover or that becomes the point where they fold. And well, what a relief to, to see him back on his feet, Josh Warrington. But um, awful to watch th th those last seven or eight rounds that you know, really were just so atypical of the career that he's had so far. The man he is, the fighter he is, just so flat, so out of sorts and, and just beaten to the punch, beaten up, bullied and, and ultimately stopped in a fashion that he's never been close to before. Very, very difficult to watch. An, an unrecognisable Josh Warrington. We have never seen that Josh Warrington. As you say, it's good that he's OK. But I tell you what, on the other side of this coin, what about that from Mauricio Lara, who came in here, they gave him a, w, a number 10 ranking with the IBF, and everyone sort of raised an eyebrow and said, oh, please, he's never beaten anybody. There's nothing on his record at all. He has just put himself, and legitimately so, into contention for a, a serious shot at a world title with this. Took his chance with both hands. He did exactly what was asked of him, and he upset the apple cart, and he came along, and he's...